Panthers with Julien Leblanc. Are you ready, Julien? I am ready. Après vous. Imagine a world in which all leaders, all of us, would thrive to get to thank you. Most of us, we wouldn't be here if we weren't able to get to yes. Some of us even manage at times to get to yes and stay there. But getting to thank you would look like this. People that follow you, people that report into you directly or indirectly, would say things such as, thank you for making me a better leader. Thanking you, thank you for helping me achieve my goals. Thank you for challenging me in a constructive way. And my, may I dare say even, thank you for making the world around me a better place. My name is Julian LeBlanc, and I've been on a quest for the last 20 plus years to unpack, help leaders, teach leaders on how to get to thank you. So I've led over 10,000 hours of workshops, visited and worked in 41 plus countries. And yes, I, I believe this is a healthy obsession, but I've read over 1,007 books on the science of success. Fun factoid, the first time I was given the keys to lead a business, I read a fact that CEOs on average read 50 to 60 books a year. Now, I started down this journey. I was at like book 110. And I remember being in a coffee shop and reading that this was actually a uh, made up fact. So probably the only fact in life that served well for me. Uh, and look, once I was past 100, I was hooked and the journey continues. And what I want to share today is what I've learned from a theoretical standpoint and a practical standpoint, leading workshops around what does it take to get to thank you as leaders? Now, inspired by this great quote by Peter Drucker that said, the truly dangerous thing is asking the wrong questions and getting the right answers because all your energy efforts, they go in the wrong areas. So where I'm at at this stage, 20 plus years into this quest of <laughs> helping people get to thank you is, it's quite simple. I believe that if we ask ourselves these two questions that I'm going to share here on a daily basis, then automatically we have no choice but to level up and probably get to thank you more often. So here we go. First question that I believe as leaders we should be asking ourselves on a daily basis is why would anyone want to be led by you? Most times, we don't choose our leaders, we're assigned a leader. But imagine if people had a choice, would they pick you as their leader? Did you create the conditions, the environment for them to be the best versions of themselves? Number two, number two, did you make it easy for others to say thank you for your leadership? Again, are you someone that people say, sign me up, I want to follow this leader? Now, now that I've challenged all of us to think about these two questions on a daily basis, I owe it to you to share a few thoughts of what I've learned, what I've seen around best practices, whether theoretical or practical, to help you answer these questions with more confidence. So here we go. So around the first question, the first thought that I'd like to share is around self-awareness. The one thing, <laughs> being around a lot of world-class athletes as well, so whether you're an athlete, whether you're a corporate athlete, it all starts with self-awareness. How well do you know self? A couple of ways to drive self-awareness, and most of you have probably done this at one point, if you haven't, highly encourage you, is a 360 feedback uh, peer review. We did one recently with one of our clients, and it was awesome because the leader viewed themselves as a positive leader, a positive person, an optimist. And when she received the feedback from her peers, what it showed was she was super positive in good times. As soon as it got a bit tougher, she went to a negative place. So again, once you receive that feedback, you have two choices. You act on it or you discredit the feedback. In this case, 
total game changer for this leader. Now, if we're not going to go as formal as the 360 feedback, it could be as simple as just asking the question, how can I help you achieve your goals, objectives, and so forth. Number two, we've all heard of the golden rule. You treat others the way you want to be treated. That's why I think we've got so many challenges uh, these days, whether it's uh, generational challenges, whether it's lack of comprehension in various cultures. We need to level up to what is called the platinum rule. I don't know who came up with that, but I think it's brilliant. And the platinum rule looks like this. Imagine treating others the way they want to be treated. Now you've created psychological safety for others to be the best versions of themselves. Number three to help us ask or answer this big question is consistency. Most recently, I've seen quite a bit of employee engagement surveys with some Fortune 500 clients that we work with. And of course, being valued is always going to be at the top. Money sits there, number two or three, depending on what country you're in. But recently, I've seen consistency make its way all the way to the top. Even, <laughs> I saw one survey, I, I had to laugh when I saw this, even if you're consistently bad as a leader. So let's just sit on that for a second. Basically, humans don't like change. And we've gone through so much change over, over the last few years that we're looking for consistency. There's a great piece of research that was done at John Hopkins uh, Medical Research Center. And it was done in the uh, mid 2000s. I think it applies more than ever. And here's what the research showed. They wanted to understand the researchers after people have had a heart bypass surgery. That's a pretty serious procedure. You've knocked on death's door. You're giving a second chance. What they wanted to understand was would the patients actually make the changes that the physicians recommended only two years later? Now, I like to believe in humans, but when I saw this statistic, it completely blew me away. Only 11% of people chose to embed the changes that the physicians recommended. Translation, people chose death over change. And uh, Alan Dutchman in the mid 2000s wrote a, a great book called Change or Die based on this piece of research. So again, these are three things that I think can help us all answer that first question with confidence. Let's keep going here. Second question. So the second question, did you make it easy for people to say thank you for your leadership? Let's dig in here a bit. First thing. Clarity, clarity, clarity. <laughs> As a leader, communicating, whether it's, it's a change initiative, whether it's a new project, were we crystal clear on the why, the what, and the how? We have to own that as leaders. Now, a great test to really see if people are on the same page as you is the elevator pitch. Imagine asking your teams, what's the elevator pitch on this project as you're 30 days into the project? you would very soonly find out uh, if things are clear. I uh, bumped into a stat the other day where the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, it only takes a minute to make it all the way to the top on an elevator. So when someone says, what's your elevator pitch, you basically have 60 seconds. So I think it's a great tool to just check in with our teams and really own clarity. Second thing, look, We've, we've seen the values of ownership, entrepreneurship, but the reality is most people are really playing with someone else's money, yet we're asking them to think and act like entrepreneurs. So let's call it intrapreneurship. And here's what that could look like. As simple as, let's create freedom within a framework. As leaders, my belief is we need to set the parameters, the non-negotiables, and then allow our people to work their magic. We hired them for a reason. Let's let them work it through. So secondly, entrepreneurship. Now, all of this, all of these ideas completely fall apart if we don't have the right habits, if we don't have cornerstone habits. James Clear, uh, the author of Atomic Habit, 
the New York bestseller, challenged the notion of it takes way more than 21 days to install a habit. You know, this 21 day was started in the 1950s, I believe, by a plastic surgeon uh, called Dr. Maltz that said that what you observe is after people had a uh, face surgery, so a new nose, it took them roughly 21 days to get used to their new face. So guess what? The Tony Robbins of the world thought, well, this is great. Humans can rally behind 21 days. But the research that's been done recently and, and highlighted in James's book, uh, Atomic Habits, showed that on average it's 66 days. So with that said, I think we owe it to ourselves to take on the thank you challenge. So here's what the thank you challenge could look like. So imagine, and it's very simple, every single day, five minute reflection around the two big questions that I just outlined. Now, if you're bold enough, journal. The research shows that journaling really, and that's why most people carry journals. Most high performers that I have the pleasure of working with, they talk about their journals. That said, it could also just be a uh, reflection. It doesn't need to be written down. Second thing, commit to 66 days. The great American uh, comedian, Jerry Seinfeld, they interviewed him. They said, Jerry, you're going to become a billionaire as a comedian. What's your uh, magic sauce? And without missing a beat, he said, don't break the chain. Every single year, he puts a calendar. And every day he writes for an hour so he can put an X and he tries to run it through the whole year. So my invitation to you, I've been, I tried this myself and I've been doing it with people I work with and what they've seen is they're seeing, hearing and feeling different things being around people that they lead, whether it's directly or indirectly. So again, the two big questions to help you get to thank you. Why would anyone want to be led by you? That's a big question. Did you make it easy for others to say thank you for your leadership? 66 days, think about these questions. And what was interesting as I was preparing for this is someone just sent me this quote. And, and it is one of my favorite quotes uh, by Billie Jean King, the famous tennis player. Pressure is a privilege. And I believe that as leaders, it is a privilege and we owe it to ourselves to answer these two questions with confidence. What we also know is it is not a straight line to success as we're going to try to rewire our brains, as we're going to try to look to getting to thank you more often. So there is a messy middle. We need to fall in love with that. And with that said, I want to leave you with one of my favorite proverbs. And the proverb goes as such. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time to plant a tree is today. So with that said, I would like to invite all of you to take the thank you challenge with me. I appreciate yeah, that this opportunity to learn and grow with and all of you. And I'm absolutely filled with gratitude. Let's uh, be the change. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, uh, for that, uh, speech full of gratitude and insights and for crunching 1,007 books into a brilliant talk on leadership. Thank you so much. And our chair, um, Hans-Peter Siefen, has a question for you, Julien. All right. Vas-y, go for it. You're on mute, uh, Hans-Peter. Let's get that fixed. Thanks for the call. Uh, for the talk, I mean, <laughs> it was a it was a great concept. Um, now uh, you said that mm, most questions, most leaders are assigned to you. If you if we think about political leaders or leaders of countries, they are chosen by people. They are not assigned. Uh, they they are you get to choose them in a democracy. Um, so I guess that's a good example of leader leader choosing as a process. Yes. Uh, let's think of a case. Uh, yes. And the question, why would anyone want you to be, uh, why would anyone want to be led by you? Why did so many people want Donald Trump to, to lead them? Is is it because of self-awareness, platinum, platinum rule, all, or is it consistency, or is there something fourth or fifth 
in the process as well that affects why people choose someone as their leader? Well, look, I think one of the things that we, if we look at politics, is we should be asking our leaders, what questions are you thinking of on a daily basis? What questions are you obsessed over? Because I think you can get a really good peek under the tent of where the person's leadership style and where they want to take the journey is based on the questions they reflect on. I think all these attributes unconsciously or consciously we probably look for certain things during the the lead up if you want as we choose leaders and um look self-awareness um i think it's very easy to see who's self-aware just listening to them talk about uh topics of their choice so uh, realizing this is a big question that you've asked me i believe that we need to listen to the questions that the leaders are choosing to um to digest so thank you for that opportunity to, to answer your question. Thank you.